Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Vietnam War on my channel. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be talking about something that's uh, been brought up in the comments, and um, specifically by teenagers who have seen Platoon or you know, other Vietnam War movies from Hollywood and probably played video games that are revolving around the Vietnam War. And, uh, you know, I'm so cool right now, I could almost be in a Hollywood movie or a video game. It's going to be kind of revolving this Ace of Spades or the, the Death card. Um, now, this is going to be a fun one because most people, this is one of these that, again, is just widely, like, accepted. And it's, again, in, like, Hollywood pop culture and video games without actually any substantiating evidence as far as I've seen or other people that are savvy in the era have seen, or veterans for that matter. Um, so what it is, is there's this kind of superstition that, uh, the Ace of Spades represents death or, you know, your time is coming or something. I don't know exactly where that came from. Uh, this information is kind of loosely based off of, um, some research I did on charliecompany.org. It's another kind of thing run by Vietnam vets. And so anyway, what, what, what soldiers would start doing is they'd start carrying these cards, you know, playing cards are a really good thing to have to kill, kill time and boredom. It really is a good thing. Um, you can do so much with it, et cetera, et cetera, out in the field and back at the barracks. So anyway, um, some people say it was like certain people would carry them and like put them on their first confirmed kill or whatever. as kind of like a, a, a warning sign or a message to the Viet Cong and, and North Vietnamese armies. It's kind of a psychological tactic. Um, sure, I, I buy that. I've seen actually photographic and video evidence of this being done in the field on corpses and stuff. It's kind of kind of dark and macabre, but um, it happened. That happened. So um, as far as carrying it with you, yeah. And there was another one where a veteran recounted that when he arrived in, uh, I think he was in Cameron Bay, um, a, a short timer, a guy that was going home, like a guy that was on his way out while he was coming in, uh, found him and pulled this card out of his pocket and said, here you go, man. And it had like three total dates of like tour dates on there. And it was the three guys that had carried it before him. So it was kind of used as a good luck charm or, you know, one of those things that uh, it's a talisman, people will call it. And so that's an actual veteran recount. That's very believable because um, superstitious and good luck, superstition and good luck charms are a very common thing in the military, um, especially in a combat zone. So that's believable as well. Now, as far as them wearing that in their helmets, I literally have never seen an actual photo or uh, video from the Vietnam War and the entirety of it that shows a soldier or a Marine or an airman or a sailor or anybody having that actually in their helmet band. Um, it's just one of these things that people say is, oh, it happened. You know, it's, you can very commonly see it. Well, I've never seen it. Uh, the pictures that I have seen, the one, they just look too distorted and too like staged to actually be real and the, it just doesn't look right. Um, as far as like the photos, I'm guessing they're reenactors or a post-war kind of thing or maybe clips from a film. And that's what other people actually think as well. Like I thought this and then I saw you know, the, the opinions of others on, this, on these photographs and they thought the same thing. Now, I'm talking about the myth of them wearing it in their helmet. Okay, here's a couple practical reasons why you wouldn't want to wear it in your helmet. One, it's a big white like target basically for anybody when you're walking through the woods. White does not... It clashes with all of drab and green and, and other natural colors. It's very bright. Um, I guess so is a pack of marble cigarettes, but usually that was on the side. Uh, this is, you know, that too. But again, it's on the side or whatever. And that's just a practical reason I can think of is you. It's just a big white target to shoot at, right? Um, now, another reason is things get wet on your helm. That's why like the cigarettes, you see some people doing it. Depends on where they were. If it was, you know, monsoon season and it was raining all the time. Generally, the stuff that you keep up here is going to be like in a plastic bottle, like uh, CLP or uh, LSA oil or whatever the hell they call it, the gun oil. Um, the bug dope like this, uh, plastic things, uh, P38 can openers, that's a pretty common one, plastic beads or glass beads. Things that will not be destroyed by like torrential downpour. A card is going to fall apart within like a day of it being on your helmet and, you know, brushing against leaves and grass and stuff. So that's another practical reason why you wouldn't do it. You want to keep it in like a plastic bag or something in a pocket or a pouch. Um, so now we'll, we'll get to kind of the actual what happened and what there is evidence of right here is there is video and photographic evidence and tons of 
actual accounts that line up and are very similar. It's not like the one or two that became a huge, you know, widely um, accepted myth. Um, so basically what happened was they would leave them on bodies and they would leave them around. They would leave them in like positions that they, that they you know, tunnels that they blew up or destroyed. It's kind of like a way to, to fuck with the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese Army. It's just a kind of a psychological thing. Probably more. It was more of a gimmick. Um, again, Charlie Company Network kind of talks about this. It's more of a gimmick for the U.S., for the GIs, than it was actually like a psychological, you know, mind fuck for the enemy. It was more of just kind of like a, hey, this is kind of fun. This is cool. It's, it's superstition against like occult stuff. Very interesting. Um, now, there is a lot of evidence of that happening. And there is also evidence on the bicycle card company. Obviously, that's not a bicycle card. I actually don't have a set of those. But that's all I had to work with. Um, the bicycle card company actually started shipping over crates of uh, just aces of spades, right? Um, and they named it Bicycle Secret Weapon or something like that, which I, th I think is kind of funny. Again, a morale booster, right? This isn't like something that, you know, turn the tide of the war or whatever. It's just a morale booster because it's like, yeah, this is kind of interesting. You leave it on a corpse, you know, whether it was your first kill or just you found a random dead Vietnamese soldier. You would put that on there and then they could say that, you know, well... Yeah, we were here. Pretty much like a Kilroy was here thing in World War II. That's kind of what the Ace of Spades was in Vietnam. Um, so yeah, you'd have guys carrying stacks of these and stuff, it seems like, from the photographic video and um, first-hand account evidence. And they would put it on bodies and stuff, and in villages or tunnels, or just things that, like, you know, pretty much a fuck you, we were here, um, don't mess with us kind of thing. And that, that there is evidence of that. As far as wearing it in the helmet, no. And to that teenager or 14 year old or you couldn't have been more than 14 who was arguing with me on the channel without providing any facts or anything you know someday you'll, you'll learn that you don't know everything um you know I, I thought i knew everything when i was that age too you don't know everything try to listen to people who have been doing research a lot longer than you and i'm not trying to sound like an asshole or rub it in but it was kind of kind of kind of stupid the way you presented that and just yes they did yes they did like a four-year-old so maybe you can learn from that and this is the video, and it, here's the thing. I'm saying my research has shown, and other people's research that I know have shown, that did not happen. They did not put that in their, in their um, helmet band, okay? If you have actual photographic evidence that you can prove is not a reenactor photo or a doctored up photo, if you can prove that, I would love to see it. Um, if you do have evidence of that, not, I'm, I'm also evidence to me is not... Well, my grandpa said he did it or, you know, whatever. It's, that's not going to be enough. I'm sure maybe they, they weren't exaggerating or whatever, but I need photographic or video evidence of soldiers actually wearing it in their helmet that's not a reenactor. I would love to see it, and that would definitely change my opinion on this whole thing. But, again, from what I've researched, it didn't happen in the helmets. They carried them. They did what I said they did. But it, why would they wear it in their helmet? Okay, it gets destroyed. It's a, very obvious. And, I mean, what's the point? It doesn't, it doesn't serve any practical purpose. So anyway, fun little, uh, fun little video, um, kind of dispelling another, you know, myth that surrounds the Vietnam war, just kind of a micro level thing. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and, um, maybe hit the notification bell if it does anything. I appreciate it and hope you enjoyed this and learned something. We'll, uh, keep the comments open and they've been fairly civil so far. So let's try to keep it that way. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.